Well, hey everybody, this is exactly where it starts. So let's go get started. Okay, it doesn't get any more exciting than this. This is the beginning. This is the beginning of the very first episode of Tommy Bell Art's drawing show, Sketchy and Funny. There's no script for this, folks, so you're watching at your own discretion. You can turn it off at any time. It's, I'm not calling it an art show. I will be doing some drawing, and it is a show, but I don't know as an art instructional, you know, I don't know how much art instructional value this is going to have. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing behind the scenes. Uh, I know I ramble on and talk fast, but I also am doing this with absolutely no script. So it's just going to be what it's going to be, which is like you coming in, me pulling the curtain back saying, Here, here's what I'm doing. This is how it's, this is what I'm doing. See what I mean? There's no script. So we're going to hop right into this one because I'm super excited for this drawing right here because it's a portrait piece and it's going to allow me to show you how I color the skin using colored pencils, Prismacolor color pencils, and, and, and how I do the blending and stuff. And These shows are not going to be just done live and I don't have five cameras doing this. So sometimes a show may wind up being the course of a week or whatever. I mean, it takes me like 10 days to do a drawing, folks. That's how it is. So anyway, we're going to get into this. This drawing is called Cheesecake. It features Tatiana Vitello, who is the podcast queen of Tokyo-ish podcast down in Florida. She's been waiting a long time. We've been waiting to collaborate on this one. This is a great idea. She loves it. So we're going to hop right in and, and, and get to it. Okay, so for starters, gang, it's really important that you look at the side-by-side -side because I do work off of photos. So here's Tatiana's photo, and then here's what uh, what I came up with on that. Now, to get started, we're going to use uh, several different colored pencils. Uh, I always use the same pencils in Prismacolor for uh, flesh tones, which is Burnt Ochre, Beige, Cream, and White. There's the Burnt Ochre, Beige, Cream, and and the, the white is around here somewhere uh, and I'll always also brush off uh, access with a, a dry paint brush just like this here so so that's how we do that uh, now we're gonna pull up closer to this and I'm gonna show you because it's now I'm gonna try and duplicate this in art form so let's see what we can do okay so the first thing we're gonna do I always work dark to light with everything so we're using the burnt ochre first uh, and I, uh, I like to start by uh, going into the eyelid area and working on the eyes first. And uh, everything I start off with is with a super light touch. I don't want to throw down a huge blo you know, block of dark color and then have to worry about how I'm going to remove that. So, and that's maybe why these drawings sometimes take a long time to do because uh, with color pencil, I don't want to overcommit too much. If there's an area and I know it's super dark, it's like you kind of get a little bit of bravery, like, okay, I can, I can hop in and, and do that. But I always try to start pretty light because it's, I can always go over it and make it darker later if I want to. Um, so always start off noodling around with a really light touch on the paper and I'm always blending out like in circles so like woo, 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 like that I know that's an exaggeration but it, it shows that same purpose that that it's a super light touch and I almost blend out everything that I can uh, so that it doesn't have a really sharp edge on it and that's kind of the key to making this blending thing work which you'll get a chance to see here eventually but right now I'm just noodling around with her eye shadow if you will and you know I am glancing back and forth obviously at the photo I use photo reference for every drawing and I'm not shy about saying that um, there's a lot of reasons for that and the biggest reason is that these take me so long to do um, you'd never get somebody to sit long enough in the same position for me to capture the way I do uh, 
that exact image. You know, somebody be moving around and shuffling and, oh, what do you mean you want to eat? <laughs> so, so you get it. You know what I mean. Um, I'm going to come in here and just put a, extend this lid a little bit, but not with the ink line, with this wonderful burnt ochre color. And now I'm going to go on the lower lid here and start doing the same thing. And there's probably going to be a lot of areas in this drawing show where I shut up so I can speed up the camera to show you, you know, to, this way it's not going to take you 12 days to watch me do a drawing or 10 days to do a drawing or whatever. You can actually watch it and make dinner or put the dog out or whatever it is you got to do. <laughs> and sometimes I run out of stuff to say because I'm daydreaming into uh, art land. You know, they, I've heard it said before, uh, although I've never looked into it myself, but I've heard it said before that you're actually using, when you're drawing and talking, you're using two different parts of your brain. And I didn't know I had two parts. <laughs> So how about that? Um, and that's why you could very easily get distracted though from doing one and the other. Okay. All right. So <laughs> I'm kind of happy with that. And I don't want to, well, let's see here over top of that there's this area like so see how light i'm starting this though and with like darker colored pencils you definitely want to start lighter you don't want to start gouging and unless you're like blocking in like the background and you know it's like black okay that's fine you know what your confidence level is but if you're not sure exactly about how dark you want to get things uh the lighter you start the easier it is if you have to try and fix something and, and there are fixes for colored pencil, uh, limited fixes, like the obvious eraser. And that's, God, I hate to say it, but if you got to use it, and sometimes you, you do need to use the almighty eraser. But if you go in too dark on white paper, forget it. It's not going to work. The eraser is not going to help you any. So it's, it's not just as safe as you think. So be sure of what you're doing, though. Like if you're doing it my way and you're, you're looking off of photos and stuff, continue to look back and forth at that photo right here and, and see what it is you need to see, you know, um, do, do, do. And again, I keep that brush close by because these, these pencils build up a wax around the area and, and you know it just it can get very messy very quickly and you definitely don't want that so uh now we're gonna take a look and there's a reason i'm not doing the iris right now um that'll come a little bit later but so we're gonna start where are we at here right about here <laughs> just and i take longer doing the uh, darkest color in just about any uh, coloring pattern that I do. I always start dark, work my darkest color to my lightest color. And it's usually like four or five colors that I'm working with. Um, I start with the darkest one and the darkest one takes the longest because it, it is the most important. Uh, it's the one that's going to show through when you're blending. Whatever you do in your darkest color is what is really going to show through. The lighter you get, the more transparent, the more see-through your colors get. And uh, and it's 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 how you're not going to hide your mistakes and stuff. You know, like you're not going to pull that gig off. It's not going to happen. So I'm super careful about my what I call my shadow phase or my darker my darker phase because 
every bit of it's going to show through. So it really has to be perfect. And sometimes it's hard to see where you're at when you haven't added any of the lighter colors and you're looking at the photo and you're looking at this thing and you're going, God, you know, <laughs> am I getting it? Am I not getting it? I don't know. Um, it can be hard, but so that's why this stage definitely takes me an extra hot minute to do. Maybe we'll speed up the camera here for a minute and, you know, just kind of show you in fast motion what I'm talking about as it gets to the blending. But I always like focusing on the eyes first because I feel if I can nail the eyes then I might have a chance at getting the likeness of the person down like super close which is really the most important part of doing a drawing because i'm i spend all this time saying i'm featured this drawing features so and so and these ladies have got you know we've had contact we're working together in a, in a sense uh, and i'm you know there's a lot of pre-production stuff where we we're discussing how we're going to do this drawing you know what it's what's it going to look like sometimes specific ideas or, or even down to colors or wardrobe choices or anything like that not every lady gets super involved but some of them do and i always try to make it a point that they and that they like the idea that i've come up with you know if i oh, i want to draw this and they're like god i hate that i hate i'm going to draw put you in a drawing called apples and you hate apples and what's the point <laughs> So for me, uh, there's, there's some pre-drawing discussions and stuff that go on uh, to make sure that they're really getting the spotlight that, they, that they're wanting. You know, when they reach out to me or approach me or whatever and say, I really would like a drawing, you don't want to just say, great, you're going to be a Wonder Woman, you know, or, or whatever. Like, it's, that, that isn't right. So... I try to make sure that there's an idea going that uh, that they really want to be a part of. I think that's important. Okay. But you see how I'm starting to work my way out from the center of the eyes start here and then kind of working my way around and I do jump around like I might be in one spot and all of a sudden realize I might want to work in another spot for a minute you know sometimes that happens when an area is not working out or it's fighting you for some reason or whatever and you're like okay I'll see what's going on over here <laughs> you know and I've never thought so much about like how to talk about what it is that I do because normally I'm doing this and the tunes are jamming, you know, like rocking out, having a good time. And I'm not thinking about it. I'm just, it's just doing it. So when you, when it's like, oh, I think I'm going to do a drawing show, the first thing that you starts running through your head is... How am I going to even, like, I know I'm not an art instructor and I know I'm not going to be showing people all these, uh, you know, incredible, it's not like a teaching show, but I'm like, what? Well, how am I going to pull this off? Like, and have any kind of value of like, hmm, that's what he does. So I've never thought and dissected so much in the past few days about how to talk about what it is I do. <laughs> Very weird. All right. I do love watching the process come together, though. It's like kind of bringing somebody to life on paper 
And it's just cool to watch it happen. Again, this is not a tried and true method that's been taught for generations. This is only the way I do it because it works for me and I was never a real good student in class, even art class. So a lot of what I do I had to make up because it's not like, wow, I studied that really hard. <laughs> I didn't. So, you know, that's probably not a good thing to say for all the young kids out there that are looking for a role model. Although that role model probably shouldn't be me. So there you go. Here's what it is. I told you, no scripts in this show, right? Well, I'm not lying. I mean, I did tell you. I did tell you this was a long process, right? Okay, just thought I'd check. Because there's a lot of stepping away you know, or, or taking a minute, pulling back, and, and going, hmm, when do I think about this? Tatiana's got such great eyes. And again, I knew this was going to be a, one of them fun portrait projects to work on. We got some pencil left on here that we don't want. We don't want any graphite pencil on here. Alright. That ain't going to help us any. It's okay if it's color pencil, but graphite pencil at this point in time is not needed. Only in the mapping out stages is it necessary to have the standard pencil marks. They're usually very light and easily erased. Because what happens is when you start blending in color, all of a sudden everything, if you get graphite in there, it's all gray and it doesn't look good. And yes, you may have noticed I'm wearing glasses when I draw and that's because I'm old. <laughs> I'm an old dude. So I do old dude things. I wear old man sweaters and I wear glasses when I have to draw. So fuck off. <laughs> I may have to bleep that out. <laughs> Again. It's a great kind of drawing show. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll leave it in and wait for somebody to yell at me. We're bringing Tatiana's eyes. Like, bringing him to life. Yes, yeah, so you got this area here. Got some shadow to it without making it dark. We're just keeping it a light touch on it. The pencil itself is dark enough. Burn ochre is a Kind of a medium, sandy brown-ish color. And it works great for uh, skin tones and stuff. Uh, and you can use it to a variety of wonderful effect. It's different flavors of skin tones and just everything within these few colors. Uh, it's pretty outstanding and you're going to see that. But at the moment... Again, it's just back and forth, looking, looking, looking. What? What works? What doesn't work? Mm -hmm. All right. And this is the fun stuff. Obviously. And when I'm done with doing the the shadows on the face and I'm going to go all the way up and down the face on this and, and get all the shadows in. When I'm done with that, that's when I'm going to hop in with my next color down, you know, and, uh, and show you how the blending starts.
Okay, so obviously I've been working on this for a while and when you get your shadows, you know, exactly how you want them, that's that stage that we're talking about where it's really got to look good. You can go ahead and turn over your ochre, your burnt ochre pencil for the beige. And here's where it gets fun. So we're going to take this and go in, in circular motions and just start uh, adding the secondary color. And I'm going right over, in a lot of cases, going right over that burnt ochre color. Just like this. And we're really going to start to define things but this is the second stage because again there's several colors to doing skin but this is how we start to work on the blending for all that by making a really light circle and going around because then those are gonna be highlights basically so you're just kind of working in reverse and working back towards that darker color let me show you Once again, when you get your your flesh tone, your beige, to the area where you really like it, and it's kind of really showing that it's blended into the ochre, it's time to switch up for the cream. So we start in the center of this, and we're just going to push right out. 
Watch this. And that's how you do it. You just kind of keep blending, blending, blending out, 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 outward, or outward. And then you can noodle with this all day long to your heart's content. Let's brush that off. There we go. And, and that's the way it's done. So let me go in here a little bit. And I want to hit up here also. And we're going to hop over here. Just want to get that pretty good. I'm leaving a little open area right there. Not much though. I want to put an awful lot of shine to her face on this one. I really don't. So we're going to keep that very minimal. Not a lot of shine. Okay. Just leaving again the smallest little pinhole there. Let's hit this up, this little area here. These little areas here. together on the face to make it a person to make it look exactly like one particular individual that's what's so neat about this okay we need this like this little area here going around and, and, and plugging each one of these areas here trying to blend out without mixing colors and muddying them too much but looking for that smooth blend you know mm -hmm. Same thing in through here. Get this nostril. Now I need to leave that right there just a little bit. Right there, I need to leave that kind of white. So because it's the highest point on her nose and I need to make sure that that gets more of an extreme highlight than some of the rest of this. And I need to do a little bit the same way with the bridge of her nose as well. I'm trying to leave, you know, some open areas, but not many, not many. This we're going to fill in right there. And all the way, we're going to do, do like this. Let this look very 
smooth. Nice and soft and smooth. Work out some of these edges here where the colors are coming together. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting close to something. Uh, let's bring this in just a little bit more. that another little open space there and I'll show you why in a second I mean you already know why you already know what I'm gonna do it's not like it's a big surprise <laughs> so don't act shocked when you see it all right mm -mm 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 -mm. now with these open areas that I've left here this is like the final part of doing the face and it's just adding a little bit of white and then it's going to give you your very a good idea of, of where you're at with your face <laughs> okay <clears throat> let's just make sure that you're the tip of your white is very clean when you do this and then just and you don't want to go over every color because you don't want to whitewash stuff it's just about putting a little spot in in just a few areas blend it out blend it together like that <laughs> And you can dull these down a little bit. I don't like to make too many changes when I get things uh, going. But you, you, you've got a little bit of play with the white because it is pretty translucent. But you don't want to go over everything. Like it, it just, you get a lot of wax build up on the paper. It's not a good thing. So try and be definitive where you want your colors and all that and you'll be in good shape here we go just uh, check the tip on that again because you don't want dirt and stuff on there when you especially when you're doing this because I'm pushing really hard uh, at this point to get those colors to blend the way I want them to and yes I'm using like the tiniest little nub of white because sometimes that helps me get into these areas and I'm not fighting with a big huge colored pencil stick <laughs> so and again taking a dry brush and just <laughs> all right so the next thing we got to do to bring this face to life is add the eye color and the lips because it looks a little goofy right now so let's hop in and do that all right we're gonna go in with a chocolate and start she says she has light brown eyes so I want to hit the top area here and on this side Just the top part and just blend the like real light right here we're gonna go from chocolate to the burnt ochre this color should be pretty familiar to everybody and I want to leave a few spots <clears throat> open and like this this drawing is nice because the eyes are a good size for working with to be able to show you how it's done in detail. And finally beige. And just 
kind of blend a little bit. There we go. <laughs> Leave some spaces open here, like so. going in the direction of the hairs I'm trying to now when I go back into these corners here we're going to use a terracotta and a pinkish color we're just going to go super light right there going over top of that with this pinkish color and then with the white Here with black. All right. All right. Let's let's do some lips darkest color first. Very light pink. Just And finally, white.
when you add the eyes, eyebrows, details, lips, all the other uh, little parts of the face to bring somebody to life. In this case, Tatiana, there we are, bringing her to life. All right, gang, uh, the whole purpose of this first episode was to show you how I do faces. And as you know now, the face is for the most part colored in and finished. And that means that's the end of the very first episode. Tommy Bell, sketchy and funny. This is it. This is all I got for the first episode. So I hope it's been entertaining. Thanks to everybody for tuning in, watching. In future episodes, I'll show you how I do hair and wardrobe and background details and other stuff. Like, I don't even know. It won't be on this drawing because I'm not going to spend a year doing this drawing. This drawing will be finished by the time I shoot the next episode. And you'll probably have seen the completed uh, drawing of this by the time you even see this episode. So, what, you know, what can I tell you? But, uh, hey, thanks for hanging in throughout the whole thing. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy this and want to see more. Tommy Bell, sketchy and funny. Thanks for tuning in.